Welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're going to be working on the 240 again. Uh, we're going to start by fixing that pulley. So, how well you can tell that that pulley is crooked. Because whenever I cut the spacer, this was already cut from something else, probably the bandsaw, and I wasn't paying attention. I didn't clean up this side. Also, if you look at the belt, it's not even far enough out if it was straight. So the plan is to remake this now that I've kind of fixed the lathe and uh, remake it and make it a little better. And then we're going to figure out how to triangulate it. We're going to make a bridge here like I said before. But we're also going to oh, I'll put like a piece of eighth inch steel from here just behind this down to that nut or something. Something to keep it from flexing this way and the bridge should keep it from flexing this way and then we'll be alright. So I'll get that off of there. And We'll start making a new piece in the lathe. Oh, as you can see, the manifold's not actually bolted down. And the whole stud's going to come out. Makes sense because I use a nylon. If you can see the pulley wobbling around, it's how crooked that thing's drilled. I don't even think it's that that the surface was that crooked. I think that when I put it in the mill, it just drilled crooked. Crap. There we go. Probably because I didn't realize when I started, when I made this end and gave it a register to sit in the pulley, that it was already drilled a little bit on the back side. So that probably also made the drill a bit walk. So we're gonna, we're gonna fix this and make something better. Another problem with this lathe, and it's not really the lathe, it's just the chuck, is that it's not very deep. The jaws aren't that deep, so it's only got just a little bit of bite on it. So it doesn't center, it centers here great, but out here, you've got to sit here and I just go until it touches, spin it, wherever it touches I tap until it, until it looks pretty good. But if it catches, especially something this long, I'm going to try to cut this off without it losing grip. And then I'll have to center drill a little bit, just give it a spot so I can use the uh, the bearing and the centering thing. So it'll hold it. Because or else it'll bite too deep and just launch all this crap across the table. So, first step, we're going to get this cut off. Well, that very quickly didn't work. It's too much leverage without something supporting it. So I'm going to get my length and cut it off. And I'll use this thing to kind of hold this from going crazy and cut it off shorter. And we'll just have to work at that end. Well, that was mostly uneventful. So now we're just going to change tooling. We're using... This little post is pretty cool quick change. We're using this parting tool. So now we're going to go back to this and we're going to start cutting this down and give it the register to slide into the bearing.
We've got no reason to really reduce the diameter, but I am going to flip it around and true up the back side of it. There's what we got. Fits that kind of snug. So that's pretty stout. This is nice and true this time, so hopefully when I drill it, there's not already a hole so the drill bit won't wander and it should sit up straight in the mill. I don't have a forge off for this to offset it and drill it that way. And I might be able to... If the, if the jaws were deeper, I'd just put something in there and make it pinch it and off-center it. And I may play with that off-camera here. And if I can make that happen, I'd rather drill it that way. But if I can't, the mill will be just fine. It wasn't going to work in the lathe, so I've got the mill set up. I already started drilling. So I've just got it offset and got the drill bit centered to go in one of the grooves. Try not to push too hard so it doesn't wander, but it's fairly soft aluminum, so it really shouldn't be a problem. Now we'll set it up and see how bad she wobbles. Hopefully not at all. I probably didn't explain yet. This thing couldn't, I explained in an earlier video, but where the pulley is, it can't be centered. It has to be eccentric so I can offset the pulley from where that bolt is, just because that's, that's what we gotta do with this thing. So that's why I couldn't just drill it in the lathe. Get this thing wedged back in there. I didn't have to remake my washer, the offset washer, because I made it out of not something that was cut off crooked. Looks like I need to get a longer stud if I'm going to do the bridge and to add the other support, but it looks like the height is right. We'll uh, get the eccentric, and there we go. Tighten it down just a little bit. I'm going to have to put something flat in the sides on this so I can hold it with a wrench so it doesn't just try to rotate like it's doing. Yeah. work. Uh, something must be off. No, it's off the crank. see it flex. I don't know if you can see that. That's why we got to make a bridge and support it because there is a steel sleeve inside of that but it's still a long bolt to be supporting all that. But that's why it has to be offset that way because or else the belt's going to touch. But see if you can see this a little better here. We got to make some supports. Oh there we go. You see it flex. We're going to connect it from there to there, which means I got to make a. I'll need a longer stud, and I'll have to make a special washer for this to offset it so that I can just run a plate across. It will make it suck to get the belt off, and if the belt ever does come off, it's probably going to eat it, but that's all right. I just went ahead and made the bridge, and I made this off camera. I just made another one of these, but the hole is centered, so we can see how much it flexes now. I don't really see it moving.
most of the force is going to be pushing it that way, so that may get it done, but it's so damn close. I should have made these a little taller. That's probably what I'll do. I'll just remake these. But I think, for the most part, that gets it. So I may not have to do anything else. I mean, it is pulling up this way. So I guess tomorrow I'll figure out how I'm going to reach down and grab another bolt. Because this can just pivot off of that. Um, but the idea is there. I mean, that I, I don't know how longevity-wise that would work by itself. So tomorrow we'll make something to go in behind this to grab a bolt down there somehow, some way. Um, if I was more creative, I could probably make something off of this when I make this piece to have a bolt boss there and this can just come up and grab that. If I was super creative, I could, probably could have just made something to this would just bolt right too. But that's uh, it's a little above what I can do right now. But this will work. So once we get it running, then we can see once once crap starts falling apart, then we'll know where to where to apply more attention. So I said for tonight, we'll pick it up again tomorrow. Well, after the work day and thinking about it, I think I'm going to leave that just as it is. The engine turns this way. So it's most of the load is going to be on this pulley here, which has its own. It, it was the original boss for pulley. So I think that's going to be fine. The only load this is really going to see is the load from the power steering and the tensioner. So it may be a problem whenever it's running and I max out the power steering, you know, just deadhead it or turn the steering wheel all the way until it loads. I'll watch this and see how much it moves. And if it starts moving or it is eventually if it moves a lot, it's going to fatigue that bolt and break it. So I'm going to wait until it's actually running to worry about doing anything else with that. Anyway, thank you for watching and please like and subscribe if you're new to the channel.